Our third question, guys, is from um, September 2023, Gauteng. Okay, the diagram below shows a part of the menstrual cycle in humans. Sorry about that noise. Um, the arrows represent the direction of blood flow. So these arrows here, they're representing the direction of the blood flow. Okay, so identify structure C. Let us see what is happening. <laughs> identify structure C. There is structure C. Um, that is a primary follicle, guys. Structure C is the primary follicle. Okay. So, obviously, I'm not sure if I should explain the whole thing, but obviously, under the influence of FSH, one primary follicle is going to develop and start to enlarge, blah, 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 and it will then become a secondary follicle, then it becomes the graphene follicle, which is a secondary, then graphene follicle. Okay, then name the cycle. Um, shown in the diagram above, which forms part of the menstrual cycle. Remember in the menstrual cycle, cycle you have the uterine cycle uh, and the ovarian cycle. In the ovarian cycle, we basically get to understand the changes that are taking place in the ovaries. And in the uterine cycle, we see changes that are taking place in the endometrium. Basically, the endometrium breaking down, um, becoming thicker, more vascular, glandular, and blah, blah, blah. Now, what we are having um, in the diagram is the ovarian cycle. So that's the answer. Ovarian cycle. It is showing us changes that are taking place in the ovaries. Now, arrange the letters A to E in the correct sequence of their appearance in the cycle named in 3 to 2. Now, what we're having here is um, the corpus luteum that is de degenerating. Uh, they're asking us for a correct sequence. So it's going to start here, guys. That's where it's going to start. We'll have the primary follicles. Then one will start growing to become a secondary follicle, to become a graphene follicle. Ovulation then takes place over here. Then a corpus luteum gets formed. And this corpus luteum is becoming smaller. It's telling us that the corpus luteum is degenerating. So the correct sequence here will be C first. It will be C, then B, then A, then E, then D. All right. Um, A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, we can't talk about F. They've said A to E. Okay. Um, then the next question, draw a labeled diagram of gamut F and identify uh, and identify it in the caption. Okay. So you must draw a labeled diagram of gamut A, F, which is the ovum, and we need to identify it in the caption. So we're going to follow drawing and labeling rules. I am limited with space, guys, but I am going to make a plan. So this is out of four marks. So the first thing that we need to do, obviously, is to write our caption. And we indicate that this is a diagram of an ovum. So we can't say diagram of gamut F or the gamut labeled F. You need to identify it, okay? So I think they were very nice in this question. They've asked you to identify it in the caption. But in other questions, guys, they're not going to ask you to identify it. You need to know. So even if they say draw a diagram of the gamete produced in spermatogenesis, which is obviously the sperm cell. So now you obviously need to indicate that in your caption, that this is a diagram of a sperm cell. So I hope I hope you, you understand what I'm saying. Now, this is probably the most simplest diagram that you'll ever draw, okay? So, you then start by drawing the jelly layer on the outside. It's just circles, guys. Then that's it. Then, after the jelly layer, you then have the cell membrane. Then, you'll have the cytoplasm. Then, the nucleus. Done. That's it. Remember to follow all the drawing and labeling rules, guys. Diagram of an ovum is your caption. Then you underline your caption. 
make sure that your diagram is filling up a minimum of eight lines a minimum of eight lines guys also draw do not sketch draw the diagram do not sketch okay so then you then label um the first label there is the jelly layer that's the jelly layer then um the second circle that is the cell membrane cell membrane then filling up the cell membrane is the cytoplasm then uh, you then have your nucleus okay now the rules here is make sure that your diagram is more to the left hand side of your page so that you can have all your labels on the right hand side please use a ruler i, I obviously can't use a ruler because i'm sure i can uh, but I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, use a ruler for your label lines. Make sure that your label lines do not have arrows at the end. So you cannot be having label lines with arrows at the end. This is incorrect. Also, don't draw a big dot at the beginning of your arrows. That is also incorrect. Your label lines must not touch each other. They must not cross each other. And they must always be parallel to each other. That is very important. Okay. Okay, class. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's move. Oh, I have to show you how we mark a diagram. Okay, this would be marked this way. Um, the first mark would be for the caption. Uh, yes, so the first mark, there will be a code CDL. CDL. The first mark is for the caption. If you've written your caption and you've indicated the name of the gamut, um, then the D mark is for um the drawing so your drawing is correct and we are having those three circles that is the one mark then labels uh, it's for two correct labels any two correct labels so if we're marking the jelly layer and the cell membrane there will be two dots to indicate that these are the two labels that i looked at then you've got your two marks there so you get a total of four marks three two five a high concentration let me get my my pen a high concentration of which two reproductive hormones will be supplied a supplied by blood vessel x and also uh, will be transported to other structures by blood vessel y all right all right so the two hormones that are going to be supplied by blood vessel x supply meaning supplied to the ovaries okay that's easy so supplied by blood vessel x the two hormones will be the pituitary gland hormones so these are the hormones that are secreted by the pituitary gland that is your lh and fsh lh and fsh and this is easy for you to to understand guys because remember these hormones are secreted directly into the blood then they'll be transported by blood vessel and those two hormones lh and fsh are transported by the blood vessels into the ovaries in order for the fsh to stimulate the growth of a follicle and in order for estrogen sorry not estrogen in order for lh to stimulate ovulation and the conversion of the um, empty graphene follicle into the corpus luteum. Okay, so that is easy. That is why you're seeing the arrow meaning blood um, with the hormones is obviously getting into the ovary. Now, the two hormones that are transported to other structures by blood vessel Y, that would be the ovarian hormones, guys. That is your estrogen and your progesterone progesterone basically what we're having here with the two hormones remember estrogen is going to be secreted by the growing follicles these follicles are going to secrete hormone estrogen and this hormone is going to be transported out using the blood vessels into the endometrium because this is the hormone that is going to cause the thickness of the endometrium so it will be transported out using blood vessel y same with progesterone progesterone is going to be secreted by the corpus luteum and progesterone 
it will be secreted into the blood and be transported by a blood vessel and in our case it's labeled blood vessel y and this is going to travel in the blood and actually also go to the endometrium to maintain the thickness of the endometrium hence it's going to go through blood vessel y those are the two hormones estrogen and progesterone last question explain how the formation of structure d will lead to the start of the next menstrual cycle. Let's see what a structure D. Okay, structure D over here is a corpus luteum that is degenerating. There's a terminology for it, but it's not, it's not really mentioned in, in metric. But so, yeah, we'll just say it's, it's, it's a corpus luteum that is degenerating or becoming smaller. So explain how the formation of structure D will lead to the start of the next menstrual cycle. I hope you understand what is happening. This is the corpus luteum, and this is still the corpus luteum that is getting very small, guys, and that is because fertilization did not take place. So the, de the degeneration of the corpus luteum will obviously lead to the decrease of progesterone. The endometrium will no longer be maintained, and the FSH will then start to increase. So that is why we are answering the last part. The formation of structure D, meaning the, the um, corpus luteum degenerating, how would it lead to the start of the next menstrual cycle? And the start of the next, next menstrual cycle is actually stimulated by FSH. So we need the progesterone levels to decrease in order for FSH to be secreted by the pituitary gland. That is negative feedback, guys. Okay, so how you need to answer this? You will say the degeneration... Of the corpus luteum that's that is structure D that is the corpus luteum becoming small so when the structure becomes small this leads to a decrease in progesterone level in the blood so this leads to a decrease in progesterone levels in the blood so obviously the hormone that is there to maintain the endometrium is the progesterone so if there's a decrease in the level of this hormone that means the endometrium is no longer maintained because the hormone that is supposed to maintain it it's now obviously decreasing in terms of its levels in the blood the endometrium is no longer maintained Or you can say the endometrium sheds or menstruation occurs. Obviously, when there is low levels of progesterone in the blood, FSH will then increase. FSH will increase, causing the next cycle to start. Ah, we're cooking, we're cooking, we're cooking, we're cooking. One mark, one mark, one mark, one mark. All right. That's it.